During a Discord call, the GM said one of the most horrifying things I've ever heard in a game. H hang on guys, I gotta kill this roach on my wall. <laughs> oh shit! It can fly! Oh shit, it can fly! Don't fly at me, motherfucker! My name is Jacob Crow, and welcome to The Crow's Perch. Today on The Perch, we have a Halo-inspired game that goes off the rails, following the terrible exploits of a that guy who calls himself Max Vector. <laughs> so before the loins of you and your significant other become completely drenched, also be sure to tell your mama burb I said I'll be late tonight while you're at it. And give her a peck for me, alright PogChamp? Let's gather up a murder and get right into this tale of depravity. So before we get started, a warning. This story contains a lot of abuse of the sexual kind. So if you don't have the stomach for that, please, don't continue. But hey, RPG horror stories. I've been a long time reader, but this will be my first post. So let's begin. So in this, we were using basically a fan-made Halo TTRPG that borrowed heavily from the Only War system. For those unfamiliar, Only War is a system designed by Fantasy Flight Games to allow you to play Warhammer 40k as Imperial Guardsmen. Really cool game, but not the topic, so let's get back to it. In this context, we would be a marine squad operating in the UNSC before the fall of Reach. So no one really knew about Forerunners, Flood, or anything like that. In game context, all we knew was the Covenant. This also all happened online, over Discord, and using the Roll20 website, so we were never all in the same room. So our cast of characters important for this story are as follows. Crest, Toothpaste, me, Rava, Team Sniper, Max Vector, that guy, and the cause of many, many problems. I will refer to him as Max. These were all the character names, no real names here. Wolf, German machine gunner, and our actual leader, and the GM, who hovered over all of this with his vast wealth of knowledge of the universe. There were three other players, but they aren't really important to this story. So the stage was set for a really good Halo game we only needed to start. So the story only really begins with the starting three players. Everyone else would shuffle in later, including Max. The game started with Rava, me, and Wolf in boot camp, where we got our basic introduction to the system and each other's characters, as well as figuring out what job we wanted. Wolf took heavy weapons, Rava became a sniper, and me, the standard weapon specialist, which basically means a grunt. This is also where I earned the nickname Toothpaste, due to my character being Crest. Nice. So at this point, the game was going great. We got split up, only to reunite a good time later, on a forest planet. There we would evac stranded marines by fighting our way through jungles and blowing up anti-aircraft so we could get off world. We gained a few more players at this point and we were officially made a full squad. And for a while, that was it. We would do hard fought missions and have fun roleplay. Rava and Wolf would start to develop a romantic relationship with each other and things would generally go like this for a couple weeks until the squad was sent to respond to a distress signal from a jungle world. Enter Max Vector. Now, we had known this guy from a few other games. He was also a GM for us in about two others, which all three of us were generally a part of at least one of them, including the GM. Apparently, he had gotten word about this game through one of the other players, and through complaining about never being a part of any games as a player, Mostly because the games he was in, as a player, generally fell apart, including another D&D game, but that's a story for another time. But, yes, he had gotten his way into the game, via constantly DMing the DM and complaining about not having a game to play, until he was eventually let into the Halo game. And the problems began almost immediately, when he described this muscular man with tattoos, a bald head, and a long measuring stick in two big d20s downstairs. Now we had known about his sexual nature in other games, constantly flirting with female NPCs, well I say flirting, but more like forcing himself on them until the DM was worn down enough or the player to have sex with them, oof. But not just normal sex, no no no, he brought his fetishes especially to that of the domination of others. 
But either way, back to this jungle planet, the group is flying over with a pelican, so we get his signal over the planet he had been stranded on. Apparently his team had all died, fighting brutes, but he had the situation handled because in his words, These brutes are slow and dumb, like they could ever catch me. I basically have all this handled. I just need a pickup because I'm running low on ammo. And then he said what would become his catchphrase. No balls, no glory. Am I right? Is this guy fucking Duke Nukem? What is this? I know what sex is. But I won't tell you. So we would fly over the planet going to him. We opened up the back to find him running from three brutes, and they were gaining quick on. Much to his annoyance, we began to open fire on the brutes, dropping a rope for him to grab onto. But due to the brutes' tankiness, and their great jumping ability, and us flying low, they were able to grab onto the DMPC squad leader as soon as we got Max Vector onto the ship. So, hanging onto the rope was both a brute and our squad lead as we were flying away. And with our armaments, we were trying to shoot the brute off. And that was the first of many complaints, first and foremost. Why a spreading shotgun was bad to shoot near an ally. Why the machine gunner can shoot more than him. And he was especially pissed off that I was the one to put down the brute. Not via bullet, but by dropping a flashbang in its eyes, causing it to let go. This had pissed him off, to what I would later find out was supposed to be his badass C, to make him seem tough as nails. But no matter what, it was a bit of a rough opening, but a fun mission nonetheless. So now we have the Max Vector. Let's describe Max. He was better than you. Unstoppable, badass, womanizer, hard drinker, bestest, strongest warrior ever, horny at all times, and non-stop talking down to the female members of the party. Even though he was told to knock it off with that multiple times, it continued on. Oh, and if he wasn't doing the most damage, then he was very much pissy, even copying the build of our heavy gunner, because he was quote-unquote useless in combat even though shotguns were borderline broken up close and could possibly two-shot an elite with full shields. So he forced the GM by complaining into being able to respect himself to make himself a borderline copy of Wolf's character. So, some time passes, we do a couple missions together with similar results, sexual remarks on female characters, complaining about damage output, how nobody listened to his extra special awesome sure to win plans, and how no one was liking his jackass of a character. So this time we are doing well, but the DMPC squad lead had decided we were ready to be left on our own. We had grown into good soldiers, and he would be transferring leadership over to one of us. It was heartfelt, and we were gonna miss the squad lead. But we put it to a vote, on a poll, over who would be the next squad leader. And thus, Wolf was voted into squad lead. But oh no, no. Max Vector was no balls, no glory, and decided to throw a hissy fit out of the game, talking to everybody that he should be in charge, cause he is the oldest, and that his training in real life made him the best fit to lead this team with constant messages from him bad-mouthing everyone but himself and the person he was directly talking to, which had brought out something very disgusting. The Wolf and Rava relationship had been growing nicely. They were pretty cute together, but Max hated this both in and out of character. In character, he reasoned, obviously, he was so sexually attractive that any female would be lucky to have him. And not only that, he finched at her out of character, saying this beautiful quote that we still reference to make fun of him to this day. I'm tired of sharing your characters. Like he had legal ownership of how she played or who she could have had her character date. In other games, he had forced romances on Rava's characters quickly, and here he was very pissy about not having her here too. So, through all this whining, blackmailing, and just tiredness, he had changed the results of the vote in-game, and was elected leader of the squad to the charge-in of basically everyone but one person. Democracy at work, right there truly. Either way, as he had now forced his leaderness on us, he only got worse, because now he was in charge, and no one could do anything about it. 
The old squad lead had left some money in a warthog for the team. This group money was immediately claimed by Max, and used to buy his own personnel heavily armed and armored APC, where he kept the people who were loyal to him with him and safe, while the others were left in an unarmed warthog, because this one didn't have a machine gun and was more akin to an armored box. But it was still pretty fast, faster than the APC, which pissed Max off even more because he bought all these upgrades for the APC, only he and the other were in. But cut to only 30 minutes later out of game, Wolf was going around checking the vehicles, only to find Max in the APC having sex with two female officers who the GM had just given him to get Max off of his back. Now here's the thing, he described his naked body constantly, and didn't stop having sex. He looked at Wolf and first said, What? Haven't you seen a real man before? Why don't you join in? I'll give you some pointers. If not, Rava might want some. <laughs> Wolf, both in-game and out-of-game uncomfortable with this, left the situation and had clocked out for most of the remaining session. And more events like these would occur, with him abusing and forcing himself on others while running around and claiming he was a leader. Not too soon after that, some of the squad had become squad leaders of their own after completing some trials and testing, pissing Max off even more because he couldn't become an ODST, an orbital drop shock trooper. Think paratroopers, but a lot faster and in a pod. Then came a mission that really broke everything. We were sent to a snow world to escort and evacuate a group of scientists and the remaining population off planet because they had been attacked by Covenant forces. So, we drop into this hidden research base and start pushing forward against the back line of the enemy. Some great Max Vector strategies were as follows. Charge that heavy machine gun area with little to no cover or camouflage. Go run at that tank, screaming with your basic rifles, and do nothing, and do not stay in cover, just keep advancing. Now that we were not a big outfit, we had only two squads which had to last us, obviously, Many of them were not that suicidal, and did not listen to Max's plan. So yes, not charging into our deaths, we were able to make it into the facility, where we fought our way through to where we found a group of surviving scientists, a VIP who was a Spartan, with basically the mind of a child that only knew fighting. And in the bottom area, we found the lead scientist, who was a valuable asset to us. So we go down there only to discover both the lead scientist and a young boy, more than likely another Spartan in training. Now the scientist was refusing to come with us because he needed to keep his research safe, and since we were there to blow up the facility after evac, he wasn't too far off. So we fail to reason with him, and we agree that he can stay here, and that we would do our best to give him some time to download files and stuff. So Max tells me to go upstairs. He will talk to the scientist more, I go up, and a while later, Max comes back up, like nothing was wrong. Meanwhile, someone else was down there besides Max and I. Rava was hiding in the shadows, watching the whole thing happen. But when Crest left, only after a bit of time, Max Vector gunned down both the child and the lead scientist, to the horror of Rava. So basically, everyone but Rava and Max knowing this, we exit escorting the scientists out and to safety while Max himself said he'd come back to pick up the lead scientist. Later aboard the ship, Rava told us everything, and after we brought this information to the Admiral, it was us who were the ones who were chewed out, because in Max's report, he had called us all incompetent and disloyal and would not listen to his genius plans. So this led to us getting chewed out by the Admiral and our report being basically ignored. So after this, the game had taken a nosedive and people were just tired of it. The life was drained out of it, and the fun was gone, and we ended on an artificial planet looking for a way to repair our home ship. Then the game took a hiatus, where basically everything was laid out to Max, and no one liked him, which led to both him and one other player being removed, especially after what Max had been doing in other games. But now, Halo has started once again. We are killing Xenos and saving humans now, with less vector, and the game is becoming fun again. Now out of game, Max was not done yet, and over the years of friendship, only became worse. 
Which, hey, if you guys like this and want more of the Max Vector experience, I can make a part two, where we go into the wide, wide world of Gundam, and what happens when Max has ultimate power in his own world of Mary Sue's. Ooh, that sounds exciting. But for now, thanks for reading. I hope you all got something out of it. Maybe our pain leads to your game. And to my listeners, thank you for listening. This is kind of an older story that I had on the backlog, so I apologize if some of the audio's a bit spliced up. Max Vector sounds heinous, and I'm surprised that the DM didn't come up with some excuse as to why the Admiral wouldn't have appointed one of them to be the squad leader instead. But I'm glad they got him kicked out by the end of it. This idea of a Halo tabletop sounds really cool though, and using only war as the system sounds like it'd work pretty well. I'm seeing in the comments that some people have suggested the idea of using Wrath and Glory by Cubicle 7 to be used as a Halo game instead, and I'd love to see how that would turn out. As for Max Vector himself, what can I say? He has all of the lines of the legendary Sergeant Avery Johnson, and none of the charisma. Thanks for the tank. He never gets me anything. Oh, I know what the ladies like. As for this week's Art of the Week, Ezian Danny had created an amazing armor-plated Gorgon. He also mentioned that you can feel free to use this as a Roll20 token or for any other online platform. I, for one, would be proud to have such a beast turn me into stone before skewering me. Once again, a special thank you to my patron Anya. Ooh, did I pronounce it right this time? For being our resident Baron of Beaks. And if you would like to support the channel yourself, please consider joining in on the Crow's Perch Patreon, or I will have rewards, I promise, at some point. Link in the description down below. And of course, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, especially if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. And until next time, as the crow flies.